Okay, before I start today's PCSX2 version 2.0.2 setup guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just join me. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. So yes, we got PCSX2 version 2.0.2. Now this is a major upgrade and a major, major update from PCSX2. So we're gonna download this i'll leave the links in my description for what i'm using and this is what we've got with pcsx2 so we've now got a gui which is very similar to qt version anyways i'll leave the link in my description and you can have a good read through this if we just go to download and go down to latest stable we got choice of two downloads just here we got in store and we got download if you download the in store that will literally install to your hard drive i'm going to be using the downloads which acts as a portable pretty much let me just remind you this is also available for linux as well as mac os but this is strictly going to be for windows 11 i'm using this on so i'm going to download the portable version just here and once you've downloaded that, you're going to end up with an archive or a zip folder. What we need to do is create a new folder on the desktop. So right click, new folder, and I'm going to call this one PCSX2. It doesn't matter what you call this, just create a folder and just drag in your downloads in there if you're going to be using the portable like I am. Once we're inside there, just extract that. So right click on it. I'm using WinRAR. You might be using 7-zip or WinZip. WinRAR extract here. Okay, so once that's extracted, we can now delete the downloads just there of the emulator itself, and that's gone. Next thing I'm going to do is briefly talk about games. Now, I've got a games folder just here, and these are in .iso. Random games, but a couple of classics in there, such as SSX Tricky, one of my favorites. What I'm going to do with this games folder, then, is just drag and drop it into that same PCSX2 folder. Next thing I'm going to do is open up the emulator itself. So we've got two executables just here. We've got PCSX2 QT and we've got updater. I'm going to just go for the PCSX2 QT. And here we go then. So first thing we're going to see is welcome to PCSX2. So we can actually change the theme just here. So lots to choose from. Let's go for randomly pizza time. Uh, we also got language selection just here. If I go for default, that's going to leave everything in English. Also make sure to check or keep checked enable automatic updates. If we then go down to next, what we need to do next is add BIOS files to it. Of course, PlayStation 2 through emulation requires BIOS files. So if I just go to browse, what I'm gonna do is locate my BIOS files. And once you put your BIOS folder into place, we're going to see BIOS files appear. And here they are. So I'm going to select one of my BIOS files. I'm going to go for the USA BIOS just here. I'm going to go to next. And the next thing we need to do is add our games. So just a minute ago, I put my games folder inside of my PCSX2 folder. So what we can do here is go to add. But before we go to add, we can actually see just here what PCSX2 version 2.0.2 supports. So we got ISO, we got .chd, uh, .cso. Anyways, if I go to add, I'm going to then locate my games folder, which is on my desktop. And that's inside of my PCSX2 folder. And here it is. So just left click on there, select folder, and it's going to ask us to scan the directory. Just press yes on this. Then we're going to go to next. Next thing we're going to see here is controller type. So obviously PlayStation 2 use DualShock 2. So I'm going to just leave all this to default. If I go to next and set up complete, go to finish. And here we go. So this is the latest release of PCSX2 version 2.02. So very similar to the nightly versions of PCSX2, but this is now officially the emulator itself. How cool is this? So things we can do with this is actually right click on games. If I select SSX Tricky, right click on it. If I go to properties, I can actually set games up through video settings per game using this emulator. So for example, if I go down to graphics, and first of all, I'm gonna set up SSX Tricky. So for render, I'm gonna use this as use global set, and that's gonna be fine. Under adapter, I'm going to make sure my RTX GPU is selected just here. 
Under aspect ratio, I'm gonna go to fit to window full screen. If I then go over to rendering, internal resolution, if I drop this one down, I'm gonna bump this one up to say 1080p FHD. Now, just remember when you're increasing internal resolution, if you've got a lower end computer, it's gonna cause some strain. So games for you might begin to lag. Under texture filtering, I'm gonna just leave this one to global setting by Lilia PS2. Anastrophic filtering, I'm gonna try two times on this one. What anastrophic filtering does is actually defines textures in the game, so your games will look a little bit more modern. If I go over to post-processing, use global settings and none just here, I'm gonna to go to sharpen only internal resolution. Now we got achievements just here too, so if you're into retro achievements, obviously you can use this emulator nowadays. Uh, that's also gonna support retro achievements. I've covered retro achievements. I'll leave the link for that in my description so you can check out what that is. Now, before I open up SSX Tricky with those video settings applied, I'm just gonna go at the settings for this. And if I go down to controllers, what I'm gonna do, in my case, because I'm using an Xbox controller, I'm gonna just check enable X input input source. And as we can see just here, this has now been detected, or rather my controller has now been detected by the emulator. If I then go to controller port 1, DualShock 2, if I left click on automatic mapping, I'm going to just drop down to my Xbox controller, which is X input. And as we can see, everything is now changed. Everything's been mapped out. If I want to change these, all I need to do is left click and then correspond to that with, say, my D-pad on my Xbox controller. Anyways, if I go to close and I now open up my game, which is SSX Tricky. Okay, if I just close out of this, what we're going to see is confirm shutdown. If I just left click on save state for a zoom, so when I next boot up this game, it will literally save where I've just left off. If I go to yes. Okay, so let's take a look at the GUI itself. If I just left click on these four little boxes just here, we can now see DVD covers. If I right click on one of the games and go to set cover image, it's going to open up a Windows Explorer. What I'm going to do is just go over to Google and just by typing into Google PS2 SSX Trick, I've got all these images. So what I'm going to do is just take one of these images, right click on it, save image as, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. If I then go back to this Windows Explorer, go to desktop, I should by my JPEG, double left click, and here we go, we now got image for SSX Tricky. Now we can actually get the emulator itself to do this automatically for us. If we just go up to tools, cover downloader, and there's a particular website we can enter in here. Once you put that in there, just press start and that will automatically download your images for you. And I was talking just a minute ago about retro achievements. If we go to settings and down to achievements, what we need to do just here is actually go to login and once you've signed up with Retro Achievements, your PS2 game should then start earning Retro Achievement points. But like I say, I'll leave the link in my description so you can find out about that. And finally, if I open up one of my games just by default settings, as we know just a minute ago, I upgraded the internal resolution for SSX Tricky and that's why it looked better. If I just open one of these with default settings, I'll just go to default boot. Yeah. 
Three, two, one, go! So if you're into that real old school PlayStation 2 look, by all means don't mess around with video settings. But having said that, just remember it's very easy to do. Your main thing to do is just right click on the game, properties. The main ones to go for to upgrade how the games look themselves is going to be aspect ratio. Fit to window full screen. I always select my RTX card as the adapter and if I go over to rendering, anastrophic filtering, I'm going to attempt four times on this one and really it's internal resolution which is really going to make your games look awesome. So again what I'm going to do is just bump this one up to around 1080p FHD and if I go over to post processing just going to drop this one down to sharpen only internal resolution and some playstation games especially racing games it's got that really annoying blur effect if we go down to anti-blur just check that one if i then go down to clues and i open up this game again we'll see a massive difference <laughs> So yeah, and I'm not the best player with this game, but anyways, if we press escape on the keyboard, we can then go down to settings from here so we can do things whilst we're in game. We can also go to change disc from here, so if you've got a game which requires a second disc at some point, it's that simple to do. And from this menu, we can even go to save state and load state manually. And that's it for today's PCSX2 version 2.0.2 setup guide. So as you can see from the video today, it looks amazing and it looks a lot like the QT version. In fact, we'll just say it is the QT version. So it's taken the team a long time to give us a new stable and here it is, very cool stuff. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.